Dave. Hi, welcome. Welcome to Ritter Avenue Church Children's Sunday School Lesson for this Sunday, June the 7th. We are so excited to have you join us today. And you can tell we've got lots and lots of friends here, even as we make our, as we do our lesson, as we make our video. We sure missed you. We miss getting to see you in person, but we're so thankful that you get to join us right here for our Sunday School Lessons each week. Now, before we get started into our lesson, let's have a word of prayer. And then I want to ask you a couple questions. So everybody bow your heads and I'll just say a quick prayer for us before we get started. Here we go. Let's talk to, let's talk to the Lord. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Let's pray. Can I Let tell you something? Um, because Catherine is right next to you. He doesn't need to drive to your house. No, he doesn't. He, he lives right next door. Okay, can we all pray? Can we hold our hands and pray? Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for these wonderful friends who have gathered here on our blanket, but also those who have gathered to join us for Sunday School lesson uh, through the video. We love you, Lord. Help us to learn more about you all the time so that we can obey you and make you happy with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, well, I have a question for you. Yes. And I have a question for you. So before, before we actually get into our lesson, I want to ask you something. We've been talking about a lot about stories from the New Testament. Now, they're true stories. We, we know that. Now, who, when we say New Testament, what are we really talking about, Claire? Um, like some newer stories from newer times. Okay, newer times. Okay, so if they're newer stories, then we must have some older stories, right? So we have the New Testament, but we also have the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament and the New Testament together make up what? Everybody. Make the Bible. The Bible. That's right. Bible. I know you knew that too. The Old Testament and the New Testament make up the Bible. And it's true. It's God's word. We can believe it and we can live by it and it doesn't ever change. Now, what I want us to do before we start our lesson is let's sing our New Testament song. And some of you may or may not know this, but we're going to sing the, all the books of the New Testament in song. It helps us to remember them. And if you know it well, sing along. And if you're just learning it, that's okay. You'll get it. I promise. You ready, guys? We'll yeah. start with, what do we start with? Matthew. Matthew! Here we go. You ready? I remember this, but it's Matthew, Mark, Mark Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians. That's a long book name. Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, Hebrews, and then James. Peter. John, Jude, Revelation, and the Word of God. Very good. Now, guys, when you learn that story, when you, excuse me, when you learn that song, you're going to know all of the books of the New Testament, and you'll know where to find the stories that we're talking about. And that's why it's important to learn the books of the New Testament and to learn the books of the Old Testament. Not so we can say, look, I know all the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament, but we can know where to find things about God. And when someone says, do you remember where that story about, about the, the guy who was thrown into the lion's den? You can go, oh, yes, that was Daniel. Daniel. That's Daniel right. Daniel and, and the lion's den. That's right, Daniel and the lion's den. Or, and we can that's find it in favorite. the book. Is that, that's my favorite. That's the, in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. Or we can say, does anybody know when uh, Jesus was born? How do we know the story about when Jesus was born, Max? Christmas. Right, we celebrate Christmas as, as a time when we celebrate when Jesus was born. Yes. And also we read the Bible verse about him to know when he um, was born. Right, we read the Bible in the New Testament to find out all about that. Go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. Um, on Christmas Eve, when born, um, we got presents. We got presents. We get to celebrate Jesus. No, I... Okay, just one second. Just one second. Let him finish. We get presents and we, so we can celebrate Jesus and so and we read the Bible so we know. That's right. That's exactly right. We celebrate Jesus' birthday at Christmas and we give gifts because... Well, Jesus is our greatest gift, and he received gifts, so that's one of the reasons. But he grew up, and he told us how to, that, that he was the one that would save us from our sins. And when that happened, he died on the cross. But what when happened? he was crucified. Right, he was crucified. And, and he rose crucified. in three days. That's right, he rose from the dead. And then where did he go? Did he just hang around on earth? 
No. Where'd he, he go? He went to heaven. Right, he went back up to heaven. But he told his friends to go, go and do make disciples. Go and make disciples. <laughs> so that's kind of where we are now, where the church is first starting. And we have got some pretty cool news today <laughs> from our with our with our friends from the Trackers of Faith Barnyard. But I have a question first. Does anyone know what a missionary is? A missionary. Uh, it's a person who goes around and teaches other people that haven't learned about the Bible just yet, yet, and they tell them about the Bible. That's right. So do they just go around their streets? No, they go all around the world. That's right. Usually missionaries mean they are on a mission from God and they will travel to far places, maybe people who never even had a chance to hear exactly what you said, Jackson. That was excellent. Well, we're going to hear a missionary story today, but before we do that, we're going to visit our friends on the farm from Truckers of Faith. Let's see what they're going to do today. You're going to like it. Enjoy. We'll see you in a minute. Truckers of Faith, featuring Duke and Luke, the boys brothers, Penny, the cold cracking tech savvy gal who is quick on her feet, Walker, the big hearted handyman who uses his mechanical know-how to lend a helping hand, Jenny, the fun loving biblical brains of the operation, and Milton, this super sassy swine has been fitted with the latest in animal communication technology. Join this crew of high tech heroes as they sow truth, know truth, and grow truth. Tractors of Faith. Thanks for letting me borrow all these tools, you guys. You bet, buddy. Hey, what are you doing with them again? Well, the other day, Jade and I ran into a family who just moved into a rundown barn a few towns over. We've been learning a lot about how to take care of a farm, so we figured it could be a good opportunity to help these people out and tell them about Jesus, like you guys did for us. That's awesome. It's like you guys are missionaries right here in our own community. Uh, yeah, sure. Whatever you say. Duke's right. A missionary is someone who travels to other places in order to tell people the truth of Jesus. You may not have been traveling that far, but you are serving people and sharing the gospel, just like a missionary. You know who else was a missionary? Who? Saul, who later became Paul, remember? It was the story of Saul encountering Jesus on the road to Damascus that showed you and Jade that Jesus really could change your lives. Oh, yeah, I definitely remember. Paul's one of my heroes, but uh, I kinda need to get going. This stuff is pretty hard to hold. See ya. See ya! Hey Penny, what you looking at? Oh, hey guys. I'm just really trying to figure out what this map is. Walker and I found it last week when we went back to a story. So far, we know that this mark is the road between Jerusalem and Gaza where Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. But that's as far as we've gotten. Um, what happened to it? What's the deal with the big white splotch? That's the other tricky part. The flashlight went off at the exact same time I took the picture, so I only actually got part of the map. Hey, you guys think if we can figure out where the map is all about, that might lead us to some food or something? <laughs> maybe, Milton, maybe. It's always good to have hope. Well, who gave you the map? Maybe they can tell you what it means. That's the weird thing. We just found it laid out on a stone. We didn't see anyone else around. Well, that's kind of strange. Someone had to have made it, and honestly, it doesn't look that old. At least, not Bible times old. Walker said the same thing. Jenny's doing some research, so maybe she'll come back with some good clues. Until then, I guess we better get back to work. I think we have some green beans ready for harvest. When are we going to start harvesting good stuff like cookies or donuts? Milton! Milton. Hey, wow, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah. So, did you guys learn... It was. Did you guys learn anything new about Paul during our during our video? That he was a missionary. That he was a missionary, yes. And you know what? Before, Before he Saul. went to prison. And he was once who? Saul. He, he was once Saul. Well, guys, I want to read you a story today. Dad, what kind of Paul went to prison? We're going to talk about that. Paul was Saul, right? 
Now, who remembers what what did Saul do before he uh, before Jesus said, "I want you to follow me"? What and he decided to say yes. What did he put people in jail that followed him? Right. Jesus. Saul went around. Anybody who loved Jesus, Saul would say, "Hey, you." Get, they, 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 he would have them thrown in jail. He wasn't nice at all. He persecuted Christians. That means that he had he treated them unfairly and he had them thrown in jail. And then God came, Jesus came and appeared to Paul. And Paul said, okay, I, I want to do what you want me to do. And so he became one of Christ's wonderful followers and one of the first missionaries. So let's read a little bit about it. Paul didn't stay put. If you're on a missionary, you're, if you're a missionary, you're probably going to have some journeys. So I'll try and hold this up so everybody can see. Can you sit back down there? There you go. That's good. Paul's journeys. This is from the book of Acts. Now, the, what we're talking about today, all of Paul's journeys uh, from being a missionary are most of the rest of the book of Acts. So Paul, Acts 9, all the way through Acts 28. So if you have time to read some of these stories for yourself in the Bible, it'd be great. Paul's journeys. Paul traveled far and wide. He taught everyone he met about Jesus. The new believers were called Christians. Why do you suppose they use the word Christian? Claire? Because um, they have Christ in the Lord. Exactly. They have Christ. And, and, and he just got Christ in the Lord. That's right. He did. He just became a Christian. And the, the, Christ's name is in the word Christian. So he's a Christian. People are Christians if they have Jesus in their hearts, if you said yes to Jesus. The new believers were called Christians because they were followers of Jesus Christ. Paul traveled with all kinds of different helpers, and he shared the good news with everyone he met. He baptized many people. Remember how Philip last week baptized the Ethiopian? Paul did the same thing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's right. During Paul's travels, he started many churches. Sometimes he would walk for miles and miles. Remember, they didn't have cars or airplanes so he would, he would walk sometimes he would take a boat across a lake or even a sea he told everyone he met about Jesus love for them so now, that was I, the map. yes that one. you think that's the map you're exactly right Sam this might be the very same map that they were talking about in our video now let's take a quick look here before Sam what are you doing dear okay why don't you just turn this way honey okay <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look here. You can, you're right, it's a map and it looks like the very same map that Penny was talking about. They couldn't see everything because the flashlight flashed right here. But this looks like these are the places where Paul went on his journeys. Paul didn't just go on one trip missionary journey. Paul didn't just go on two missionary journeys. Paul went on three missionary journeys. Wait, and he actually, he actually went on a fourth one as well. And that's the one that we're going to really talk about today. So. Paul, when he first became a Christian, he spent three years studying. He wanted to make sure that he knew all about Jesus, so he didn't leave right away to be a missionary. He studied. It's important for us to study about God so that we know exactly what we should tell people and how we should live our lives. So that's what Paul did. So what we're going to do, I want to tell you just a little bit, not right this minute, we'll do that here in a second. I want you to listen carefully on some of the things that were the places that Paul went. I probably shouldn't have shut that book because now... I don't have the map anymore, and that map was so important, ah, wasn't it? Well, we see Polo. Here we go. That's there we go. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Now, the very first trip that Paul took, remember, he spent three years studying first, is the Purple Line. So he started right here in Antioch, and he went up and around into some of these places right here. The second one is the Green Line, and he started yet again Actually, he started in Jerusalem this time, and he went all the way up to Antioch, way far. There's Philippi. Guess what? The book of Philippians is named for the people, the Christians Philippi. in this city. Philippi is Philippians. Red. There's Thessalonica, and the book of Thessalonians is written for them. He went to Corinth, and the book of Corinthians is written for them. And he went back over here to Ephesus, and the book of Ephesians was written to them. That's blue. Exactly. And so it's green. Red. So we still come back here to Jerusalem. His third missionary journey was the red one, and he started, let's see, he started in Antioch again, and he went right around through here, and it looks like he went all the way up. He visited these churches more than one time. He wanted to make sure they were doing well, because they were new churches. And his fourth missionary journey, how do you suppose, he probably walked or maybe rode a, a horse or something here, but what, look about his, his fourth missionary journey. It's blue. He started up here in Tyre. 
and he went this way and over here and guess what he went all the way here and all the way here over to Syracuse and he ended up in Rome <gasps> when he got to Rome he was thrown in prison we'll talk about that another day so how do you I suppose how do you are. suppose that Paul got to this place here did he walk <laughs> boat, no, definitely. by boat. boat by a big ship <laughs> now uh, Sammy thank you dear why did he get born into prison well we'll talk about that here after after a little bit but Paul loved God so much that he took so many journeys and he took so many friends with him, just like we read about, and they all wanted to know about Jesus, the people where he went. And sometimes the people, especially here in Jerusalem, they, they doubted that Paul was really who he said he was because they knew him before when he was Saul and he kept throwing Christians into jail. And they said, what? Who not this the guy that kept throwing people, Christians in jail, and now he's telling people about Jesus? Hmm. But God said, hey guys, I have chosen him to be my missionary, so he's good. He loves me, so you need to love him and accept him too. So it took a little while. Sometimes we have to learn to accept people, especially when God has a big plan for each one of us. Jackson? Uh, didn't he, while he was in jail, didn't he tell people about God? Oh, he sure did. Matter of fact, there's another story about that too, honey, but there's some great stories about Paul and how much he loved God and he was willing to do anything to make sure people could hear all about God. He, what, he might have been afraid, but he sure didn't act afraid. There was even one time when he and his friends were on a, were on a, on a, a big ship. That's the same ship right there. It is. It looks like there's a ship right here. And is what it? can, what can sometimes happen in a, sh on a ship, Landon? A shipwreck. A shipwreck. Well, we are going to reenact a, sh a shipwreck for you here in just a second. So before we do that, let me tell you something that happened. When Paul and his friends were on this shipwreck, they weren't sure what was going to happen. So what do you suppose they did? They swam. Well, they might have swam, but if you were scared and on a ship, what might you do? Panic. If you're, Claire, what is your, one of your verses? Don't worry about anything. Instead, I pray. pray. I so I imagine, I imagine that Paul and his friends prayed a lot when they were on that ship, when it was sort of getting tossed in the sea mm -hmm. around by the storm. Mm -hmm. Sammy, what do you want to tell us, buddy? Um, we are doing that ship thing already. Yes, we're getting ready to do that. So stay tuned. We want to show you what this shipwright might have looked like. Okay, well, here, here, are, here are Paul and his, his friends. They're on a ship in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. And they're on their way to some of those islands there. And Paul says, Right, he can't wait to tell people about Jesus. And as they got closer and closer, all of a sudden the store, the sea got really shaky. Oh, on the ship, on the ship started to rock Whoa. back and forth Whoa. and they didn't know what to do. Whoa. And they started Whoa. to pray. They all prayed while they were being rocked back and forth. Oh, what do we do? What do we do? Pretty soon the ship wrecked on a rock and they all jumped overboard. Oh, cannonball. And they did the only they did the only thing they could do. They swam to shore, all the way to shore, to the island, all the way to shore, till they finally came up safely on the island of Malta. And they finally were off the ship, and now they could tell people all about Jesus. Oh, how wonderful. They swam. Boy, boy, oh boy, were they brave. God took such good care of them. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now can we get us some water? What a wonderful group of people. Paul, thank you for being so brave and thank you for praying. And all of his, his helpers who were going to go tell people all about Jesus. Well, that's not all that happened to Paul. At one another time, Paul was so determined to tell people about Jesus. He loved him so much. He loved Jesus so much he wanted to tell people that all of a sudden, outside when he was talking to people, he actually got bit by a... <laughs> A snake. It's a snake. Oh, and down he fell. And his friend helped him and said, Oh my. Are you okay? Are you, Are you okay? okay? And they did the only thing they could do. They all prayed and said, Please, Lord, please, Lord, save Paul's life from this snake bite. And guess what? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love it. Oh, that's right. Hallelujah. 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 Hallel
is exactly right. God saved Paul from a snake bite. He was shipwrecked. Sometimes people would run him out of the city or they might whip him. They, were, they mistreated him. But did that stop Paul from sharing about Jesus? No. No. Now, do we all, do we all have to go be missionaries? No. no. Do we all get to tell other people about Jesus, though? Yes. yes. Even if we're not missionaries in another country, and we know some missionaries, we love our missionaries and we pray for them because they have a big job to tell other people about Jesus. So even though we don't all have to go to other countries to tell people about Jesus, we can tell people right on our street, right in our classrooms, our friends, our neighbors about Jesus and how much he loves them. That's our job, just like it was Paul's <laughs> job to go on those missionary journeys. Boys and girls, I'd like us to all pray. Will you repeat after me in our prayer, please? Everyone repeat after me. Can you repeat there in your own homes too? Thank you. Dear Lord God, Dear Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your love. For your love. And for your joy. And for your joy. And for Paul. And for Paul. Being brave. Being brave. And being your missionary. And being your missionary. To tell other people. To tell other people. All about Jesus. All about Jesus. And help them. And help them. To follow him. To follow him. All their lives. All their lives. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. To tell others. To tell others all about you. All about you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, yeah, this snake. Yeah, the snake. Oh, he's so creepy. I. I <laughs> well, lessons from a ship and a snake. How about that? Don't forget, we love you. God, God loves you. We'll get some water here in just a second. We're going to have our little snack break here in just a second. God loves you. And he has the best plan for you. Don't ever forget that. Read Acts chapter 9 and enjoy the story about Paul, who started off not loving God at all and ended up being one of his great, faithful missionaries. Okay, guys, you ready? Ready to say bye to everyone? Bye! bye.